Coming up on this edition of Movie Star. I feel really blessed and I'm having a great time, so I couldn't wish for anything else. <laughs> the career of Hollywood wild child, Lindsay Lohan. We were shooting, it was 120 degrees outside. I'm walking outside barefoot on really, really hot pavement in a desert. She's a regular in the tabloids, but Lindsay Lohan also earned a reputation as a talented actress. This troubled, award-winning actress transitioned from child star to more mature roles. There's a lot of heart to the character. I think that's really important. She's a good little actress. Good little actress, really just, she was a lot of fun to hang around. When she talks to you, she's right there and really uh, centered and really present. And working with her is fantastic. Lohan became a household name at age 12. Since then, her personal life has received more attention than her work. According to film historian Pete Hammond, she's become famous for being famous. Lindsay Lohan is the tabloid queen of the moment, and a lot of it isn't her fault. A lot of it isn't. These people are chasing her night and day. They're actually trying to put her in situations that will create more headlines and, and that sort of thing. So you have to feel sorry for her to a degree. On the other hand, you have to want to like shake her and say, come on out of it. Just like go do these movies, go do this acting, you know, be serious about your career because what a career she can have. She was born Lindsay D. Lohan on July 2nd, 1986 in New York, New York to Michael and Dina Lohan. My mom was a rockette and dancer and stuff, and my dad used to be in the business. Lindsay began her career at age three, acting in commercials and on the soap opera Another World. Her mother became her manager. I confide in my mom. I tell her everything, but then sometimes I tell her too much, and then she's like, well, I know what you do, so I don't want, I don't want you doing this because aren't you gonna do this, this, and this? And I'm like, no. <laughs> So, um, but I think it's so much more important to be open with your mom because my mom's been there before and she knows what I'm doing, so why lie? She knows I'll be lying. Lohan's first movie, The Parent Trap, co-starring Dennis Quaid, Elaine Hendricks, and Natasha Richardson, is a remake of a 1961 Disney classic. I had known of the name and everything and I hadn't actually seen it, but all my friends had seen it and known of it, so I, I wanted to get the idea of what it was about, so I did watch it. It's a modern day story. It's, it's been updated from the from the version of the 60s, but it is basically still a, a divorced kid's fantasy about putting his parents back together, and I think that relates to a lot of people. Dad, what's Meredith doing here? Your mother invited her. What? I personally like that the kids get to go on the adventure instead of the parents, and the kids kind of take charge, so that's good. The Parent Trap is a family comedy about twins separated at birth when their parents divorce. Director Nancy Myers chose Lindsay for the dual role of the twins and personally gave her the news. I was really excited. I started like jumping up and down on the bed and I called everyone I knew, so I was pretty excited. There's a lot of children that want to be movie stars. I had no idea how many little actresses there were who actually, uh, none of them could really act. My experience, I found them all to, I don't know why they have agents in 8x10 glossies. But they do, and they all would perform the scenes like they were in a commercial or a sitcom, and I was just thinking, if I had to have this kind of performance all through the movie, I mean, it's just it's not going to happen. The audience isn't going to go for it. It was nerve-wracking. Lohan was a last-minute discovery. About a month before we started shooting, I got a videotape uh, from New York with a bunch of kids on it, Lindsay was on it. And there was something about the way she said the lines that I actually heard them. I, I, it's the only way I can describe it when people say, well, how'd you find her? I heard what she was saying. Why the sudden curiosity about your dad, hmm? Well, maybe because he's never mentioned and you can't limit it for wondering. Mother, you can't avoid the subject. Brother, at least tell me what he was like. Okay. One of Lindsay's characters lives in London, so she learned to speak with an English accent. It had to be like very perfect because Annie was like a very proper British accent, so I, I had a dad coach help me out. <clears throat> but it wasn't that hard, it came pretty easily. Lindsay acted opposite a body double who was replaced by Lohan on screen. I would do one character and then I would I would switch over and but while I did that first character, they would be recording my voice. Then when I went and I did the other character, they had this little thing looking like a hearing aid and it was called an earwig and I would put it in my ear and I would hear my voice and work off my voice. You know, it's interesting. Neither one of our parents ever got remarried again. 
Playing two leads in a major motion picture required skill and talent. She's got so much poise and um, presence. It's her first thing, really basically her first thing that she's ever done. It was amazing. I did feel very protective of her and I felt um, I felt that because this was her first movie, I wanted her to learn the right habits. And sometimes I was the boring person who, who would rain on her parade a bit, you know, tell her to when she needed to be quiet when other people were working and stuff like that. Um, it's, 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 it's a huge thing for a kid to do, and, uh, and she handled it very well. He's an American, you know. You're kidding. So was it love at first sight? <sighs> Parent Trap's a great role for a young actress because it's two roles, and they're on screen almost the entire time, and, and it really does take acting chops. At age 12, Lindsay attended her first premiere and talked about her two characters, the American Hallie and British Annie. I'm personally more like Hallie, and I did favor her a little bit, but I like both characters. Hallie's more like spunky and like, like into more stuff that I'm like and everything, and Annie's more proper. Lohan won a Young Artist Award for The Parent Trap. The movie was a box office success. Then Lindsay took two years off. She returned in Disney made for TV movies and a short-lived Bette Midler television series. Next, a 17-year-old Lindsay co-starred with Jamie Lee Curtis in the Disney remake of a Jodie Foster movie, Freaky Friday. I had seen the original and then I saw it again when I heard they were, when I read the script for this. And um, I was very interested. I was like, do something Jodie Foster's done? Why not? It was kind of nerve-wracking, though, because I, I wanted to pull it off, you know what I mean? I didn't want to just, it, it, that's a serious thing, doing something she's done. I wanted to do as good as her. I, for one, am not crazy. I'm merely a grown woman trapped in my daughter's body. Freaky Friday is a fantasy about a mother and daughter who switch bodies. Jamie Lee Curtis, who plays the mother, depended on Lohan for teenager tips. There are this gamut of shut-ups and I'm not good at them. So she would have to, you know, whatever the scene was, um, she would have to give me the, so, the, you know, this is the, you know, uh, he's pretending not to like you, but he secretly asked for your number. Shut up! You know, response. I was very helpful to have her basically sitting there giving it to me. It was fun for Jamie and I because we got to play two different people who are completely different from both of us to begin with. Yes, yes, I see what you're saying. A jolt. Curtis wasn't the first choice for the role. Annette Benning had been cast, but Jamie Lee and Lindsay created a bond. She walked in and she just did a cold read, and uh, the chemistry between us at the read-through was just great. Like, we got along so well, and immediately we clicked. Curtis was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Freaky Friday. Lindsay also enjoyed working with director Mark Waters. One of the things that I love about Mark is that if he wants me to get somewhere for the character, I'm like, okay, just do, just give me a, just give me a line reading, do it for me, so that I can see what you want. And he'll do it, and it'll be so funny, and you can never do it like him. Harry, get down from the table this instant. The good feeling on set extended to the Freaky Friday premiere, where Lindsay signed autographs. The movie was a hit, earning more than 110 million dollars in the U.S. Lohan was proving herself as a box office draw. Next. She played a city girl who moves to the suburbs in Disney's 2004 comedy, Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. I played the drama queen, and it's just a really cool movie. It's really different. Hello. Hey. I'm Lola Stepp. I'm from New York, originally. My character's kind of eccentric. She plays a girl who moves from uh, New York City to the Berber suburbs of New Jersey. <laughs> and um, she kind of just has to deal with going through high school, meeting new people, and living her dream, which is being an actress and a singer and a dancer and all that stuff, like a triple threat. Studio executives hoped Lohan would continue to draw audiences for this picture, but Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen failed at the box office. Five months later, Lindsay turned 18 and started dating actor Wilmer Valderrama. They split four months later. Professionally, Lohan was earning $1 million a picture. Next, she starred in a teen comedy written by Saturday Night Live's Tina Fey, Mean Girls. Lindsay plays a homeschooled student who enters a public high school where she learns about cliques and popularity. It's a fun and smart, at the same time, teen film, which is kind of hard to find. It's kind of hard to find something that's, it's got like an edge to it, and I haven't really done anything like that. Action. So why don't they just keep homeschooling you? They wanted me to get socialized. The audience that is drawn to teen films is sometimes like kids from like 10 years old to like 24. 
So it's harder to kind of appeal to the 24 year old audience. You want to be able to have them swear in the movie sometimes and act as they normally would act at that age, but younger kids can't see that. So it's kind of difficult. And Tina had a way of doing this where it was appropriate and it wasn't over the line. I definitely didn't want to dumb it down because I knew from Saturday Night Live that, you know, we have, I think we're regarded as having a very young audience and we don't sit down and go like, what do little kids want to hear? We just write what we think is funny. And, and I think, I think uh, you know, younger audiences appreciate that. They don't want to be talked down to. Tina Fey adapted Mean Girls from a nonfiction parental self-help guide. In an effort to appeal to a wide audience, the picture, which almost earned an R rating, had scenes cut and changed to obtain PG-13. We tried to have the movie be as realistic and truthful as possible and still, may, and still attain a PG-13 rating. Because I also I did want younger kids to be able to see the movie. But um, kids swear and have sex, and <laughs> we're only alluding to that in this movie. Tina has a way of, like, if she wants to change something, she does it right there, and she just, like, does it so fast. So um, it's really good to be around that. It's cool. It's, it's, I learned from that and watching that. Freaky Friday's Mark Waters directed Mean Girls. He attended the Los Angeles premiere where he talked about Lindsay. Even though she's like from the Disney Channel ensemble, you know, she's, she doesn't have that kind of patina of like, of, of cheery, like, you know, goofiness. She seems, even her voice, she has like a raw earthiness to her voice. She's kind of been my Molly Ringwald for the past two pictures, but she's ready to jump to the next level. With John Hughes era, there was no shame in a teen comedy. Like, it's just, it was a, they were just funny comedies. And so I'm kind of hoping that that's what this movie People will just think of it as a comedy. I keep hitting your mic. Think of it as a comedy and not a little girl movie. Proving Lindsay had become part of the Hollywood in crowd. During the Mean Girls premiere, she was asked about fashion. This is Valentino and my necklace is Chopard. With designers knocking on her door, Lindsay was in the spotlight and she proved herself as the star of Mean Girls. The movie was a hit. At one point, I think she was going to play the, the meaner one of them, you know, and she didn't take that role. So she was a little more sympathetic in it and with the audience, and that was good for her. So she was the titular lead there. And, um, and I think, I think uh, the, uh, the main audience for Mean Girls just gravitated towards her. Lindsay's career was on track, but personally, she became tabloid fodder when her parents filed for divorce work on another Disney remake, Herbie Fully Loaded, a comedy directed by Angela Robinson about a vintage Volkswagen Beetle with a mind of its own. I trust Disney with remakes. I thought it was a great role for me. She was my, it's a coming of age part in a way. Um, my character.